G'day, welcome back to the channel. Just a brief video, keep you up to date with what's going on because I said it would, and so I am. I'd really love to have some flight videos for you, but it is winter. There is wind, there's rain, there's cold temperatures, there's all the things that make flying unpleasant or impossible. And I gather actually in the Northern Hemisphere, you're also having some rather inclement flight conditions, albeit for other reasons. Uh, it's just the way the world's going, isn't it? Anyway, I want to talk about a few things today. Now, let's start with remote ID because that is the subject du jour. And few things on remote ID. First of all, in the USA, the FAA has rescinded the remote ID compliance for the DJI Mavic Pro Platinum. Yep, a couple of days ago, it was certified as remote ID compliant. Today, no, it's not. <laughs> Why is that? Well, because there seems to be yet another example of how this is such a flawed concept, because the, the FAA allows anybody to submit a declaration of compliance for remote ID. So I could effectively go along and say, I'm going to declare this to be remote ID compliant. They'd accept it, go into the file. And from that point on, all original phantoms would effectively be remote ID compliant because I declared that to be the case. They don't check to make sure that I have authority to make that declaration. No, 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 anyone can do it. Oh no. So what happened was someone who did not have the authority to declare that the Mavic Platinum Pro was remote ID compliant did so, even though it isn't compliant. Oh, this opens the door to a Pandora's box of all sorts of things being declared as compliant because the FAA is just not checking. It's almost like they want this to fail, isn't it? <laughs> really, it is almost like that. I would, you know, I don't know. It, it's increasingly day after day looking more and more like this is just designed to fail. Um, it's what's called malicious compliance. What do we think? Anyway, that's one thing that I spotted. Now, another thing that was on today was a, a live stream, including snippets from an interview that Sean from Geeks Varna did with Kevin Morris from the FAA. Now, I don't know Kevin. Um, he may be the nicest guy in the world, but I don't think he is the most effective ambassador for the FAA or its regulations because he, I'll give you, I'll just give you in a brief synopsis what you're gonna see in Sean's video interview with him. I don't know, or, we understand, but unspoken, we just don't care. <laughs> Those are basically the comebacks, the responses that Kevin had to most of the questions that were asked. Um, yeah, and it speaks to the fact that a lot of the remote ID stuff is simply indefensible. Indefensible, like broadcasting publicly the position of the pilot. They understand that people are concerned, but they don't give a damn. <laughs> no, Kevin, what are you thinking? Anyway, um, now, Interestingly enough, um, if, well, if I was interviewing Kevin, I wouldn't take the more uh, amicable um, stance that Sean takes. Sean has a unique interviewing style. He likes to get on side with the people he's interviewing and it doesn't push him too hard because he wants to try and you know extract as much information as he can. You catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, they say. So I think Sean tries to just squeeze out of people more than he might get if he was a bit confrontational. Well, that wouldn't be me. And I would love to interview Kevin from the FAA and I would ask the hard questions and I wouldn't take the sops, the, the, the non-answers that he tends to give in that situation. I would nail his feet to the floor and say, tell us the real truth, Kevin. So it was interesting to note that I'm actually on a live stream every Tuesday, 2100 GMT, the Drone and Sundry live stream, where a group of people who are in the hobby and the industry get together online, talk about the events of the week. And I suggested to, the, to Gary who runs the live stream that he invite Kevin to come along and we can all ask Kevin questions. And from what I gather, if and I've got confused here, Kevin initially was keen on the idea, keen to, you know, represent the FAA in a live stream. And then he discovered that I am on the live stream, <laughs> that I'm a regular and that I would be asking questions and he declined to appear, referring instead the the, the drone and sundry live stream to the, the FAA's PR or press office. Yeah. So Kevin doesn't seem to have the cojones needed to stand up and be interviewed by someone who's not going to try and be his friend, but who's going to try and put the position of the community without taking we understand but we don't care or I don't know as an answer. What do you think? Is that a reasonable thing for Kevin to do or should Kevin actually front up and, and talk to me where I can represent the hobby and really, really, really push home the hard questions and not just take those answers because I think it's time the FAA actually stood up to this because we've just, as I said, we've just seen another glaring hole in the whole remote ID thing. Anyone can self-declare anything without any checks and balances. And this is supposed to be about security. So we don't have cryptographic signatures to avoid spoofing. 
and we let anybody declare anything without checking. How is this secure? <laughs> it's the worst like, it's designed to fail. Anyway, uh, those are basically the two things. Oh no, another thing, another thing I spotted before I go. I watch Alan Yu, excellent Canadian vlogger who flies DJI drones. And uh, he showed a bit today where DJI have, a, have teased on a delivery drone that they're going to be releasing. Well, that's gotta be a winner, doesn't it? Except that delivery by drone is not economically viable even if you're using a DJI drone, probably even less if you use a DJI drone, but they're gonna launch one anyway. And that makes sense because it is the single largest market that exists out there now for drones because every man and his dog wants to do drone delivery, but it's quite an undertaking to develop your own drone. Look at Amazon and Wing, Google, they've had to develop their own craft. There's a lot of money gone into that, not with outstanding success in some cases, because uh, an Amazon drone crashed and set fire to a whole lot of wild, wild you know, grassland, um, <laughs> big fire, um, yeah. So uh, I think a DJI delivery drone would enable a lot of people, you know, small entry level people get into the drone delivery market and prove to themselves that there's no money in it, which is a great thing for us because the sooner people wake up to the fact that it's just not economically viable in most cases. Now, we've got Zipline doing special edge cases, you know, things, some things are really, really suitable for drone delivery. Delivering medicine over great areas of, of undeveloped land, you know, where there's very few roads or very poor infrastructure, fantastic, you know. Uh, maybe moving important time critical medical supplies from one hospital to another, that's another use for it. But delivering tube socks in suburbia, it's not going to happen. Even though, even though we have the, the FAA doing crazy things like saying, you cannot fly at night. It is far too dangerous to fly at night. We will not let you fly at night. And then a week later, you can fly at night. It's safe now, but nothing changed. What? How come suddenly it became from too dangerous to safe? Like flying over people. You can't fly over people. And then, oh, you can fly over people now. It's like, uh, doesn't this indicate perhaps your rules were a little over restrictive in the first place? Either that, or now you're exposing people to unreasonable risk. It's gonna be one of the two things. And uh, that's why I'd like to have a chat with Kevin. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Um, thanks for the people that helped support me through this. I would love to have more flight videos, but we haven't flown for quite some time now because it's winter here. And although it's not snowing, there's no blizzards, it is wet, it is windy, um, it is cold, and I'm old and I'm feeble. So I just, you know, make, make of that what you will. In the meantime, I gather people in the Northern Hemisphere are getting very hot and flustered. The opposite ex extreme of the spectrum. So hopefully in a few months time, it'll get cooler up north, warmer down here, and we'll all get some flying in. But if I can find some flight video that might be interesting that I haven't already published, I might stick it on the end of this video. Probably not. Anyway, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come on this. The fight against remote ID is certainly far from over. And the video that I'm doing, just taken like 10 times longer than I hoped it would, I think I'm finally almost there. And the, the, the premise of that video is, it's not ghosts, it's, sorry, it's not drones you have to worry about with your airports and everything. It's ghost drones. And ghost drones are not flown by hobbyists. Ghost drones are flown by bad actors. So don't go blaming us for the problems you're about to experience simply because the FAA designed remote ID to fail. There you go, thanks. <laughs> oh, I've been doing this for too long in one day. There you go. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now! <laughs>